All right, here we are, day three, and we're looking at parabolas today. So parabolas, remember our general form. The x squared and y squared terms are on the same side. It's set equal to zero. In general form, we'll recognize that our equation is a parabola when there is only one squared term. So either the coefficient a will equal zero or the coefficient c will equal zero. And just as a reminder that b coefficient is always equal to zero for us this year. All right, what's different about parabolas in conic sections is that we've got two different forms of our equations. We've got one that is set equal to x and one that is set equal to y. So if you look at the equation, we have x equals a times the quantity y minus k squared plus h, and we have a second equation y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. The difference between these two equations is the direction that they open. For the vertex form where the x is isolated, that means our parabola will open horizontally. That means it will either open to the right or to the left in the direction that the x-axis runs. And when we are talking about that, the vertex is still h and k. Notice that we'll use k as the opposite sign because it's the only thing coming out of a parenthesis. Uh, if the a value is greater than zero, meaning it's positive, that means our parabola will open to the right. If the a value is negative, that's less than zero, then our parabola will open to the left. And then we look at the absolute value. Remember that tells us how wide or narrow it is. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then our parabola will be narrow. If the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1, a fraction, that means our parabola will be wide. So for this form, we are going to be looking at a parabola that opens left or right. And that is when the x is isolated in the equation and the y is the squared variable. All right, when the y is isolated and the x is a squared variable, then this is the one that you're used to, the normal one where the parabola opens vertically or in the direction of the y-axis. The vertex is still h and k. Notice that h is the value that will be coming out of the parentheses, so we'll use the opposite sign of h. Uh, when the a value is positive, that means our parabola will open up. When the a value is negative, our parabola will open down. And the same holds true for an absolute value of a being greater than 1 will be a narrow parabola. When the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1, that will be a wide parabola. So when the y value is isolated, that means our parabola will open up or down. y will be isolated, x will be squared for this form of a parabola. Okay, so let's look at some of the examples where we'll be writing the equation of the parabolas in vertex form. Just as a reminder, we're going to need to do these steps. We'll have to pr pick the correct equation of the form that we're using, whether our parabola opens vertically or horizontally. We need to find that vertex, and then we need to plug in one of the other points, not the vertex, for x and y to solve for that a value. We always need to find the a value uh, because it gives us important information about our parabola. And then we'll write a complete equation. So let's look at our graph here. Uh, our graph has a vertex here at negative 2, comma 2. That's going to be our h and k. Now, our equation is going to be the vertical parabola, which is going to have the y isolated and the x as the squared variable. So we'll write the equation y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. This h value is going to go into the equation, remember, with the opposite sign. So we'll see that as x plus 2 squared. And the k value is going to go into our equation as a plus 2. Now, we want to pick one of these other two points on our parabola 
and use their coordinates. So we have a point at negative 1, negative 1. We have a second point here at negative 3, negative 1. And it really doesn't matter which one we pick. They're both just plain old x and y's. And I don't know, let's use um, this point here at negative 1, negative 1. So I'll put negative 1 in for the y, negative 1 in for the x, and we'll go ahead and solve this equation for a. So first I like to subtract that 2. We get negative 3 equals a times, and I'm going to simplify in my parentheses, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and then I'm going to square that. So I'm going to get negative 3 equals 1a, which means my a value is just negative 3. Now, what I'm going to have to do here is put all of these pieces of information together. I want to plug in the h and k here and my a value and write a nice equation as my final answer. So putting all of that together, my equation is going to look like this. y equals negative 3 times x plus 2 squared, that's the h value, plus the k value of positive 2. And there you have your final equation in vertex form. All right, let's do one more together here. This one is a horizontal parabola. We notice that it is opening to the left, so we know we're going to start with the equation x equals a times y minus k squared plus h. Notice that our h and our k are in different places. K will always be paired with y. H will always be paired with x. Okay, since our parabola opens to the left, we know that the a value should be negative when we finish. All right, let's see. The coordinates of this vertex are at 4, negative 1. So there's my h and k. Notice I'm labeling those so I don't get confused when I put them into my equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is substitute those in. I'm going to substitute that k value in first. That's what goes in the parentheses. It goes in with the opposite sign as a positive 1. The h value is going to go in next outside of the parentheses as a positive 4. Next thing I want to do is grab the coordinates of one of these other two points. I think I'm going to use the coordinates of this point at the top because they'll both be positive. The coordinates of that point are 3, 2, and that's going to go in for my x and y. So 3 is the x value, 2 is going to go in for the y, and then I'm just going to solve this equation for the a value. I'll subtract that 4. I get negative 1 equals a times 3 squared. I'm going to go ahead and square that value first. That gives me 9a. And then I'll just divide both sides by 9. So my a value is negative 1 9th, which is a good thing, because we said at the beginning our a value should be negative. And notice that this is a wide parabola. Uh, so our a value should be less than 1. So let's put these three pieces together into our nice finished equation. Remember it's x equals negative 1 ninth times y plus 1 squared, that's our k value, plus 4. Very nice work. Alright, why don't you guys give this last one a try here. Um, and then pause the video, give it a try, find your A, and make sure you're using the right form of the equation. Come back when you're finished and we'll check your answer. Okay, so if you got an A value of positive 7, you did a great job. And if you wrote your equation in this form, x equals 7 times y minus 0 quantity squared minus 3, that's a pretty good equation. But remember that when we subtract 0 from x or y, that just becomes x equals 7 times y squared, y minus 0 is just y, minus 3. And this is a really great form of the equation. If you got this, you did an excellent job. Be proud of yourself.